Hello guys, welcome back to SandVFX. I'm Sansar and today in this quick tutorial, I'm gonna show you the use of point cache modifier. So I have just simple scene. One of there, I have got this cloth animation right here, and I have the same plane which was used right here. <coughs> so we're gonna copy the animation from this file right here and paste it right into this using the point cache modifier. Okay, before doing that. Let me explain a little bit about point cache modifier. So it actually records the animation of an object and store it in a file index so that we can load it up into another object having the same amount of vertices. That means it just allows us to record the changes in vertex position, not in the position of objects. So if you have an animation of moving objects, then you will not be able to record that using the point cache modifier. But if you have the change in vertex position due to some modifiers or some other uh, controllers or whatever, then you can record that animation and apply that into the other object. So in order to do that, first of all, I just added a simple cloth modifier to this one and create this simple animation. Now I'm going to add in a point cast modifier on top of cloth modifier. Let's go down here and you will see point cast right here. You'll also see a point cache up here saying point cache WSM. It's uh, wall space modifiers and this one is the object space modifiers. If you want to know the difference between wall space modifiers and object space modifiers, you can do a quick internet search. Uh, actually, these two does a pretty good uh, job, but it's a little bit different. You can do some research and find out about it. So I'll skip that for a while. And then we're going to click point cache. Okay. Once that I have added it, I have several options here like new, load, unload, or reload. We'll take a look at that later on. And we have this option right here called record. Okay, I'm gonna record it on one file and from 0 to 100 frames. So that's what our timeline right now. I don't want to skip any frames, so I'm gonna sample every one frame. If I set it to 2, then it's gonna skip every one frame. So that means it's 0, then it will skip 1 and directly move on to 2. And this goes skip 3 and move to 4 skip 5 6 and so on so I'm I don't want to skip any frame so I'm gonna set it to 1 and then I'm gonna record okay now it will ask us to save the cache file so I'm gonna save it uh, in desktop for now so let me limit cloth and save it okay now once that I've saved it I can see I have this cloth uh, XML file on my desktop so now I can load that file into another object. So here is another plane with same amount of segments. You can see, oh yes, 100 and 100 length segments. Uh, that's the same amount I have added into this one. So let me go and add in the point cache modifier on top of this point cache, and I'm gonna load this now. Load the cloth file, open it up, and now if I see, now you can see that object has the animation as well. It can be useful if you have uh, lots of amount of uh, same objects with similar animations or if you have a very large scene which are taking a lot of time to play back due to the simulation time then you may able to uh, use point cache to speed up this playback but right now it's uh, quite fast because we don't have uh, so high resolution objects or very high simulation data so it playbacks really smoothly but if you have larger scene then it might come in handy. As well as simulating this cloth, it took me something about 10, I'm sorry, 1 minute. And if I had done the same to this one as well, like adding the cloth modifier and tweaking the parameters and then simulating, it would take another 1 minute. But it did took me more than 20 seconds to load this point cache file. So it will obviously save lots of time if you have same objects in your scene and you want the same animation for much more objects. So for instance, let me create another plane. And you can see it has the uh, same amount of length and width segments. So I can just uh, add in a point cache modifier. Or maybe first of all, let me duplicate this. Okay, one and one. Okay. So I have five different uh, same objects and I need same animation on all five of them. If I start adding cloth modifier and simulate it then it's gonna take me more than five minutes but let me go ahead and go to down to point cache point cache load a file cloth 
that's done with that one you can see it's done let me again add in another point cache point cache load cloth and yeah, let's go down to point cache again okay now you can see all of our object has the same animation and I'm sure I didn't took more than 30 seconds to do all this so it will save you a lot of time okay let's say if you have some objects uh, something like a cylinder okay let me increase the segments to maybe like uh, 20 okay. and I'm gonna add in a bend modifier let's suppose that this is not a, a cylinder but a building and I have ability to animate this angle so let me do that hit the auto key set the key go to 100 frame and let me change the angle to something like that now you can see that I have that animation right there now turn off the auto key and you see that we have that animation let's say now I need the same animation in a little bit different objects let's see this one and we're gonna reduce it or increase it to maybe 30 and if I try to load up the point cast data then it will show some error load up and class I'm oh, sorry I'm really sorry I didn't save the animation so let's go to point cache down to point cache uh, point cache and then go down and hit record and save it as a cylinder go to this one add in a point cache data sorry the modifier and load cylinder okay. nothing happens because the amount of segment is different in this cylinder than in the, this one so that means we need to have same amount of vertex in other objects to be able to export or import the point cache data okay another use of this point cache data is that you can export this animation into another 3d application like Autodesk Maya so I have already exported two of these uh, point cache data for the cylinder and the plane so let me select this cylinder and export it as an RBJ so let's go to desktop and cylinder okay and let's go down to OBZ or where did, where is it where's the OBZ okay, here is it save it and export done I just exported it because I may not be able to get the same objects in Maya so I just exported it uh, in case if you have a building which is bending right there so you'll definitely need to export that into OBZ in order to be able to open it into Maya okay let's go to Autodesk Maya and first of all let me create a simple plane okay now let me go to planes uh, polyplane down here and increase the width to 100 and 100 that's the same amount we had in the previous one so in order to load the cache file we're going to go to geometry import cache go to desktop and from there I can choose the cloth and open now you'll see a little bit change in orientation but that's okay and let me go set the timeline to 100 and if I scroll through you'll see the animation happening but it goes right off at frame 80 because we need to make some adjustments in our settings let's go to cloth cache and source end to 100 okay now we can obviously simply rotate this as per our need we can just rotate by 90 now you'll see we have oh, sorry it's uh, exactly opposite so I need to do it negative 90 okay you can see we have the same animation right here now I can go to file import go to options right here uh, I guess no need for the options go to desktop and import the cylinder dot obj file import I can see I have the cylinder right here now I can again go to geometry import cache go to desktop and cylinder.xml open now you can see you do have the animation but you can see some change in orientation but that's okay 
you can change the ad on your own. Go down here, source and 200, and you can again rotate it. So there you go. Okay, so let's again get back to Max and let's see what we can do more with Point Cache. Okay, so I have the same uh, data applied to various objects. So let me go to this one first and let's get down here. And I have the playback options. Like I can increase the speed, strength, or decrease. So let's set it to two, and let's see what will happen. Now you can see now it's it has a little more strength in the properties of clothes, so that it's uh, getting in with more. I'm sorry, it's penetrating through each other, and the animation looks a bit different as well. So you can see it's totally different. We can select another one and. Let's go down and set the strength to 0 0.5. Now you'll see it will not be able to reach the point where these clothes uh, would fall down because it is little more, it has little more, little less strength. Sorry. Okay. Let's get down here again, and you can see the playback type here. You can change the playback type as well. So let me select this one here. Go down, uh, playback time. I can set a custom start so that start from a certain frame let's say something like 20 and if I hit the play button you'll see this one only start after frame 20 you can see you can set a custom range as well so let me increase my timeline to 200 and then let me select this one right here let me increase this one that is no use okay I'm gonna set it to custom range and set it set the end frame to 200 now you'll see the animation is slower it takes 200 frame to play that animation so that means the point cast modifier will also allow you to change the playback speed or the time scale of various objects so now you can have same object lots of same object in the same scene with same animation but different uh, time some will start at frame 20 some will end at frame 80 some will last till 200 frames and so on one of the application area can be like if you have a scene with lots of flags you may want to add a cloth modifier to each and every instead of doing that add a simulation to one of the flag and then record the point cache file apply it to all the objects and alter the time using the strength as well as the playback type with that you can have uh, lots of objects with a uh, same data so this can be really useful I hope you guys uh, learned something today. So that's it for the today's tutorial. We'll see you soon with more exciting tutorials. We are working on some really good stuff. So see you guys soon and have a nice day. Thank you. Have a good day.